The Journal of Christopher Columbus, Friday, October 12, 1492. The vessels were hove to, waiting for daylight, and on Friday they arrived at a small island of the Lucayos, called in the language of the Indians, Guanahani. Presently they saw naked people. The admiral went on shore in the armed boat, and Martin Alonso Pinzon and Vincente Yanez, his brother, who was captain of the Nina. The admiral took the royal standard, and the captains went with two banners of the Green Cross, which the admiral took in all the ships, as a sign with an F and a Y, and a crown over each letter, one on one side of the cross, and the other on the other. Having landed, they saw trees very green, and much water, and fruits of diverse kinds. The admiral called the two captains, and the others who lipped on shore, and to Rodrigo Escovedo, secretary of the whole fleet, and to Rodrigo Sanchez of Segovia and said that they should bear faithful testimony that he, in presence of all, had taken, as he now took, possession of the said islands for the king and for the queen his lords, making the declarations that are required, as is now largely set forth in the testimonies which were then made in writing. Presently many inhabitants of the island assembled. What follows is in the actual words of the admiral in his book of the first navigation and the discovery of the Indies. I, he says, that we might form great friendship, for I knew they were a people who could be more easily freed and converted to our holy cause, by love than by force, gave to some of them red caps, and glass beads to put round their necks, and many other things of little value, which gave them great pleasure, and made them so much our friends, that it was a marvel to see. They afterwards came to the ship's boats where we were, swimming and bringing us parrots, cotton threads and skins, darts, and many other things, and we exchanged them for other things that we gave them, such as glass beads and small bells. In fine they took all, and gave what they had with good will. It appeared to me to be a race of people very poor in everything. They go as naked as when their mothers bore them, and so do the women, although I did not see more than one young girl. All I saw were youths, none more than thirty years of age. They were well made with very handsome bodies and very good countenances. Their hair is short and coarse, almost like the hairs of a horse tail. They wear the hairs brought down to eyebrows, except a few locks behind, which they wear long and never cut. They paint themselves black, and they are the color of the Canarians, neither black nor white. Some paint themselves white, others red, and others of what color they find. Some paint their faces, others their whole body, some only round the eyes, others only on the nose. They neither care nor know anything of arms, for I showed them swords, and they took them by the blade and cut themselves through ignorance. They have no iron, their darts being wands without iron, some of them having only a fish's tooth at the end, and others being pointed in various ways. They are all of fair stature and size, with good faces, and well made. I saw some with marks of wounds on their bodies, and I made signs to ask what it was, and they gave me to understand that people from other adjacent islands come with the intentions of seeing them and that they defended themselves. I believe, and still believe, that they come here from the mainland to take them prisoners. They should be good servants and intelligent, for I observed that they quickly took in what was said to them, and I believe that they would easily be made Christians, as it appeared to me that they had no religion. I, our Lord being pleased, will take hence, at the time of my departure, six natives for your highness, and that they may learn to speak. I saw no beast of any kind except parrots on this island.